The United States Armed Forces and many of its allies have been using the successful man-portable surface-to-air missile system known as the Manpad Stinger for the last 40 years. And with good reason, as this launcher and its variants can swiftly take down any air threat from a distance of up to 13,000 feet at speeds of Mach 2.54. Equipped with sophisticated sensors and a one-of-a-kind feature to keep upgrading its software with microchips to detect new threats, there's no way out once a Stinger acquires its target. Be it jet aircraft, helicopters, cruise missiles, or minuscule drones, the Stinger can track and destroy them all before making their way to friendly forces, becoming a stalwart of the American troops all around the world. The FIM-43 Red Eye Replacement After World War II, the United States Army began to seek new infantry air defense weapons that were more effective than the machine guns employed against piston engine aircraft. Jet aircraft were too fast for machine gun fire to damage them at all, and in the 1950s, several manufacturers started researching ways to develop a man-portable infrared guided missile. After years of testing, the U.S. Army finally introduced the FIM-43 Red Eye in 1962, a man-portable surface-to-air missile system, or MANPADS. Its most significant innovation was using a passive infrared homing to track its target. Once fired, the missile seeker went straight for the hot exhaust of the enemy aircraft. The Red Eye was designed by Convair and manufactured by General Dynamics from 1962 to 1971, and it saw action with the U.S. Army and Marines during the Vietnam War. Although the Red Eye proved to be an effective weapon against enemy air threats, the Army soon issued a requirement to equip its troops with a more effective man pads that could acquire targets faster and more effectively. The request led to the development of the improved Red Eye II, which would ultimately become the FIM-92 Stinger. The FIM-92 Stinger the development of the Red Eye's successor began as soon as the original one was rolled out for action during the Vietnam War. It was developed by General Dynamics and manufactured by Raytheon. The main difference between both is that the Stinger can acquire the target from a greater distance than the Red Eye. It also has increased speed and improved resistance to countermeasures, and thus the operator has more time to lock into the enemy target and destroy it before it gets closer to friendly forces nearby. Furthermore, the Stinger can also identify friendly aerial vehicles to prevent friendly fire. Another innovation comes with the Stinger's versatility, as it can also be fitted into different vehicles such as the Humvee, the M1097 Avenger air defense system, the Bradley M6 linebacker, and even specific helicopters with a special air-to-air -air Stinger known as ATAS. From the outside, the Stinger greatly resembles the Red Eye. It is 59.8 inches long, has a diameter of 2.76 inches, and weighs 33.5 pounds. Also, it can be fired by only one person, but should ideally be controlled by two. The Stinger can operate under all weather conditions, and the missile's front section carries a two-color rosette scanning seeker with ultraviolet and infrared detectors to acquire targets. These ultraviolet detectors track radiation, while the infrared sensors seek hot exhaust gases. Once the Seeker acquires this information, it is sent to the Homing Guidance and Control System. The Stinger's system is fitted with four tail fins. A dual-thrust flight motor, a battery coolant unit, or BCU, a friend or foe transceiver, and a reusable launch tube with a grip stock that provides tracking. Also, its high-explosive warhead weighs 2.35 pounds and carries an impact fuse, a self-destruct timer, and one pound of explosives. The warhead is launched by a small ejection motor that pushes it from the operator before starting its main two-stage solid fuel sustainer and can achieve a maximum speed of Mach 2.54 while striking targets from a distance of up to 13,000 feet. Besides inserting the missile, the operators also have to introduce the BCU unit into the handguard as it powers up the target acquisition system and the rocket. It then operates until the missile is fired and is not reusable. Combat Service 
The Stinger entered service with the United States in 1981 and remains in use until this day. The first Stingers were used in combat for the first time in 1982 during the Falklands War between the armies of Argentina and the United Kingdom. Only a few soldiers from the British Special Air Service, or SAS, were trained and armed with the Stinger, but most of the British soldiers were familiarized with the Manpad's blowpipe missile, which was developed by their country. Nevertheless, the SAS operators managed to shoot down an Argentine Pucará ground attack aircraft and an SA-330 Puma helicopter during the conflict. The American Stingers then made their way to the Middle East in 1985 to join the fight against the Soviet presence in Afghanistan. With the help of the CIA, the Mujahideen guerrilla was armed with several launchers, such as the Strela and Blowpipe, but the Stinger was the most lethal. As part of Operation Cyclone, the CIA supported the Muslim guerrilla with more than 500 Stingers that proved extremely effective against the Soviet aircraft. Although reports are still debated, it is estimated that the Mujahideen took down 269 enemy aircraft using the Stinger during the conflict. If true, it would mean that the Stingers were responsible for more than half of the 451 Soviet air losses in Afghanistan. In 1983, the French army purchased over 15 Stingers for operations in the Libyan invasion of Chad. Also, several Libyan Soviet-supplied aircraft were shot down by FIM-92As. More Stingers were eventually supplied to other rebel forces across the world that were on good terms with the CIA as part of the proxy conflict of the Cold War. And between 1986 and 1989, the Reagan administration provided over 300 Stingers to the UNITA movement during the Angolan Civil War. Other FIM-92s were used in Europe during the First and Second Chechen Wars, as the local insurgents were supplied with American manpads to damage both fixed-wing and rotary-wing aircraft. With the dawn of the new century, the upgraded Stingers were used by the U.S. armed forces in the Middle East conflict after the 9-11 attacks. The government also kept supplying the powerful manpads to other rebel forces, such as the Free Syrian Army, to fight off the Syrian regime backed by Russia in 2020. Stinger Variants There are different variants of the FIM-92 Stinger, with the FIM-92A being the basic configuration. It was followed by the FIM-92B Stinger Passive Optical Seeker Technique, or POST, and the FIM-92C Stinger Reprogrammable Microprocessor, or RMP. The B model features the dual detector seeker with IR and UR capabilities, while the C model allows the Stinger to be upgraded with new software via ROM chips inserted in the grip, which lets it respond to new types of countermeasures. Meanwhile, the D and E models feature improved performance, sensors, and software upgrades for better targeting against cruise missiles and drones. And the last variant, the FIM-92J Block 1, has replaced some critical components of the Stinger to extend its service life for about 10 years. Also, the Stinger's reprogrammable microprocessor will become obsolete by 2023, but service life extension will keep the Block 1 in service until 2030. Still, the U.S. Army issued a request to replace the Stinger back in 2020, aiming to develop a new manpads launcher that can meet the increasing demand to counter growing air threats. The Army has said that it is planning to award a full and open competitive contract no later than 2026 to produce up to 8,000 manpads missiles and fill this need. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the evolution of the manpads launchers employed by the United States. Stay tuned.